Hey, and welcome back to Wheat Beat. My name is Mike. Today's a little bit of an update. It's been a while since I've done a video and I wanted to tell you about my latest disaster. It's not a disaster because it ended up working out, but boy, it took a little bit to get there and I want to tell you about it today. Also, I'm going to give you a little update on the bakery itself behind me, show you about a few things that have come in since my last video and what's about to come in. So join me for that and we'll get started. Okay, and we're back. So I started using the convection oven. You can see the videos up above about the challah bread I made, the cinnamon buns, and I've actually made pita bread and a few other things in the oven since then. And one day I was baking something and all of a sudden I heard like a crackling sound, almost like when your sprinklers are coming out of the ground and there's like still air in the line and it sounds like a and a crinkling and that kind of a thing. And I thought, oh my gosh, are my sprinklers turning on? It doesn't make any sense. They're normally not on at this time. And yet the sound was coming from the bakery. So I rushed in here into the bakery and I look at the convection oven and I see some weird stuff on the display and I keep hearing this crackling sound and then all of a sudden, poof, it just shuts down. And there's no more fan, there's no more light, there's no more anything going on. And I thought, oh my gosh, what just happened here? So I, I rushed out to the electrical panel and none of the breakers were actually tripped. So I came back to the oven, I took off the side panel and this is what I see. I look over here to the terminal block and where the electricity is coming in from the electrical panel into the oven, there's red, white and uh, green terminal blocks there and then the wires are coming in from the house into there and you can see that on the white terminal, the one that's labeled N for neutral, which ironically is not the neutral line. It's actually, there's L1 and L2 and L1 is going into the red and L2 is going into the neutral. That's a whole nother ball of wax and you can see the video up above if you want to hear about all the exciting reasons why this oven is wired so non-conventionally. But the point being that the middle terminal, the one that's white, uh, is black, got black uh, soot on it and something's melted there and something horrible went, went on here. Okay, so I sent a picture of this to Moffitt and I also spoke to their technical support person and he said he was 99% sure that when something like this happens, it's some kind of an air gap in the terminal block. The terminal block being these green, white, and red uh, square looking things. And there's screws there. You can see that there's a little screw there that cinches down the wire. Or in this case, there's like a metal plate between the terminal blocks that connects the blocks together. And that is also held down by these screws. So he was quite sure that somewhere along the line when this was installed, one of these screws was not tightened down all the way. Therefore, there's like a little tiny air gap and then a spark can form in there and then that can lead to a short and basically a lot of heat and melting of things. And that is what happened here. Why it didn't happen up until now, I don't know, but it happened. So he suggested that a service technician come out and replace the terminal block. And I said, great, that's exactly what I need to have happen. Okay, so the technician shows up the next day. He's parked outside my house. He calls into the house and he says, uh, excuse me, but is this a residence? And I thought, well, I think it's pretty obvious that it is. And he said, I can't come into your house. And I said, why can't you come into my house? He said, because our insurance doesn't cover us for residential, it only covers us for commercial. So I actually walked outside where he was calling me from. And I mean, the guy was so uh, adamant about it that he, he even started like backing up his car as I was approaching. He like that much didn't want to come near my house. And I said, wait a minute, would you stop for a second? You know, he rolled down his window and I said, what is the problem? This is a commercial space here that I'm working in. I've got commercial equipment, I'm doing commercial work. It just happens to be covered by a roof that's residential. He said, I don't wanna hear anything about it. We are not covered for it. I'm not coming into your house. I'm not gonna do anything. If you wanna pack up the oven and bring it to our, to our shop, we'll deal with it there, but I'm not coming into your house. I thought, well, 
wow, this is, this is new to me. And I saw that there's the part that I need sitting on his dashboard. I said, can I please have the part right there? And he, he handed it to me and said, you can take it, but I'm not going to service it. So big lesson learned here because then I called Moffitt and I said, what is going on? And they said, yeah, it, we do not service our ovens in a residential setting. So big lesson learned is if you buy commercial equipment, make sure that the company services that equipment in a residential setting. And even the guy at Moffitt admitted that we're, they're seeing more and more of these ovens going into residential environments where people are running home businesses from and they seeing this more and more, but they still have not changed their policy and they do not cover uh, anything under warranty in a residential uh, setting. So you're kind of on your own. Now, luckily the terminal block that needed to be replaced, is not that complicated and even better than that is that a lot of commercial equipment is fairly easy to service because it's not like residential where they have all these co cosmetic uh, pieces of plastic and things you have to take apart just to get at a part inside commercial equipment is very simple that way it's basically just parts and pieces all laid out in a way that you can disconnect them and replace them fairly easily so at least we have that Nonetheless, it was a uh, eye opening, rude awakening, as you would say, that I'm on my own with this oven and that's just the way it's going to be. So I took the new terminal block and I took out the old terminal block, first of all, and I put it next to the new one. And here is what it looks like side by side. Now you can see that the old terminal block is melted there in the middle. It's warped. Um, there was basically a screw going down the center there that was connecting two of the terminal blocks and that all got fried. So I took it out. I put in the new one and hooked everything back up. This time I tightened everything down really, really well to make sure there was absolutely no chance of an air gap. I went back out, turned it on and voila, it works. So everything's back to normal. I've actually baked a few things in it so far and, and it's running like nothing ever happened. So uh, I just crossing my fingers that I'll have no other hiccups. So that is what happened with the oven electrical. It was kind of a disaster, uh, disaster averted, moving on to the next thing. Um, and while I had Moffitt on the phone, I actually got a few updates for things that we had discussed in past videos. You can see those past videos again if you go to those uh, links for the challah bread and the cinnamon buns. One of the issues was that I felt like the temperature was had to be set very, very low to get the same result that I would get at a much higher temperature in a rack oven. So for example, the challah dough in a rack oven, I normally set it at around 350 uh, Fahrenheit. And in this uh, Moffitt turbofan, I was running it at about 275, 280 significantly lower temperature yet getting very good results and Moffitt basically said we don't know it might have to do with the efficiency of the fan it might have to do with the efficiency of the insulation or who knows what but basically we recommend that you modify your formulation to suit your needs and then once you get to that point then go with it they didn't seem impressed or worried at all about the fact that my temperatures were significantly different from other ovens so I'm gonna go with that. I am getting good results. I just have to tweak the temperatures a little bit and the time, uh, but basically everything's coming out the way that I would expect. Okay, next on the list was the vent. I had mentioned that when I pushed the vent button, it would just flash and I would have expected to hear something or see something. When I took off the panel, I had an opportunity to push the vent button and I'm sorry that it's a little bit out of focus here, but you can see this rod is rotating. It's connected to the vent and it basically appears to be working. I don't hear anything because the oven is so much louder, but I'm just gonna let this one go. The other one was the door seemed to close just fine when the oven was closed. It's kind of like this. You basically open the door and then you close it and it requires a little bit of a slam, but it locks up really nice. The problem was when the oven got hot, there was some pressure built up inside of it. And then when I went to close the door, it didn't close like I just showed you. It was like you had to slam it. I mean, slam it to the point where I almost felt like the glass was gonna break. And that's obviously really bad. 
And when I spoke to Moffitt, he said he's actually not worried about that because the seal is brand new and uh, it's kind of stiff. And when you close the door, when it's hot, there's pressure inside there. There's also the expansion from the heat. He says, you know, it's going to take a while for that gasket to basically uh, be broken in and it's okay to slam it, but I wasn't super comfortable with that. So he did suggest that I make a slight adjustment to the door. And now that I'm on my own, I kind of figured out how to do it myself and it's actually not a really big deal at all. So when you look at the oven, there's basically like a, a latch over here and there's like a gasket over it and then this is what the door hooks onto. So if you peel back this uh, plastic just a little bit, uh, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you can see it. There's a nut back here. You, you basically unscrew this nut a little to loosen it and then this piece can be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. Now obviously if you do counterclockwise, it pulls out slightly and then it, the door basically it latches more easily but it doesn't seal against the, this um, seal as, as well. So I actually unscrewed this just slightly to loosen it. I did one counterclockwise turn which pushed this thing out just ever so slightly and then I tightened the nut back on and then uh, kind of slipped this gasket over the top of it. And then now when I close the door when it's hot and I've tried this, it actually is very similar to what I'm going to do here. It just snaps shut. So that's actually uh, worked out perfectly well and I'm happy to report that that solved the problem. Uh, I didn't really have any other questions for Moffitt. Those were the main ones and so I feel like I got all that resolved and now we just move on and I'm going to continue baking with this thing. Now, let me give you a few updates for what's happening with the bakery because I haven't done an update in a while. So obviously you've seen the oven and over here to the left of it we have a big missing space. Well, today Today is the day that the deck oven is supposed to arrive. It's not going to land in this spot today because it's going to come on a pallet and I have to I have people coming to install it for me and it's kind of a big thing and they're not going to be here for another couple of weeks. So even though the deck oven will be here and I will do a short video on uh, what that looks like when it comes today, uh, the fact remains that this this won't be filled in with the deck oven for a little while and that's okay. We still have our beautiful large convection oven. Now let's look at the rest of the bakery. So the other thing that's coming next week, right across here, there's going to be a wood work surface uh, for doing all of the dough manipulations. And right now I just have, you know, some uh, flour and carts and things like that. And then I uh, installed a 96 inch long commercial shelf over here for all my things. And then I have a, a pretty nice coffee machine there. Uh, and then I got a commercial sink and I did uh, connect it so that it uh, basically discharges everything into that floor drain. And if anybody's interested, send me a comment here in the video and I can show you a quick video on how I put the sink together. It was actually a little more involved than I thought it would be, especially getting that faucet in place. And we'll talk about that. We have the 40 quart commercial mixer down there that we can roll out when we want to use it. I have a kind of a rack system here for putting all the baking trays and things that I need. I haven't really organized this yet the way that it needs to be, but I just kind of shoved everything in there for now. We have a couple of uh, other mixers, the 10 quart spiral and the Hobart uh, planetary over here and then the refrigerator that you've already seen. So that's really all there is for now is in terms of an update. The big things that are coming next is the deck oven and the work surface, which is pretty big and long and nice, I hope. And then once we get those installed, obviously I'll do videos on them. We're getting close to the end. I'm almost done building my micro bakery and it's coming out great. I have to say there's definitely been some hiccups, but it's coming out very, very well. Definitely go back and look at the last videos if you want to see how we got here, you know, the planning steps and the little parts and pieces that went into making decisions and how things got implemented. So where do we go from here? We are almost done and what are we gonna do when we're done? We're gonna obviously start baking and then I'm gonna start doing some totally different kind of videos. We're gonna do experiments where we're gonna kind of test, uh, you know, the old wives tales of baking, you know, we have to punch down dough or we have to, 
uh, proof it in a certain way or what happens if we overproof it? Can we rescue it? I mean, there's going to be lots of interesting things that we're going to be able to do in this bakery to kind of test all of those um, no, well-known things about baking and see what works, what doesn't, what's important, what's not important. And I think that's going to be a whole lot of fun. We're obviously going to do some uh, formulations. We're going to bake things and we're going to see uh, how to do certain recipes and how to improve upon them. So there's, there's so much potential here to do in this bakery because we are working with commercial grade equipment. It's all professional level stuff. And I think it's going to be really, really fun as this adventure continues. So join me next time as we continue finishing uh, building this out. And then as we move on to other projects and until then go bake something.